All right, welcome back to Uptick Talk. This is episode seven, and uh, today we've got Gareth joining us. Gareth, uh, thanks a lot for being on the show. How are you doing? Oh, good. It's um, it's pretty unprecedented here at the moment. As I was a bit late for the interview because trying to drive home in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, it's been like the worst, the worst flooding, like in in about oh goodness, God knows, maybe twenty years. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was just trying to drive drive home from from having dinner, and uh, there was. There was literally about five five different roads that we normally go down, and we had to turn around because they were just flooded and take a different route. So yeah, a little bit a little bit out of sorts at the moment, but otherwise otherwise good. <laughs> good good. Um, yeah, there's a lot of yeah. that going on around around the world, right? Here in Japan, we you know fingers crossed we haven't had anything anything serious weather wise, but uh, you know, I've heard like in Europe and different parts of the world, the, the weather is a bit crazy these days. Yeah, huh. it's pretty wild. Pretty mm. wild. Mm. So the yeah. image I've got behind me here, that's uh, that's one of yours. Uh, I don't remember the name. Do you know what that one's called? I sometimes struggle with titles and, and that was that was one of them. Um, but somebody said that it reminded them of Alice in Wonderland. It's been it's been a really good start to the year for me art wise because uh, that one, uh, that particular one actually uh, just sold last week, um, which is, you know, wonderful. It's they they, they take a long time to produce and Sometimes they can take a few years to sell. Some of them sell in a few days if I'm lucky, but some of them take a few years. And that particular one took about, I think it took about six months to sell. So that was, that's been really, really good. Yeah. So that's the physical copy that sold, right? The physical painting, yeah. Because I think I think that that's something that um, I would like to get across very strongly is um, particularly in this this wonderful digital age, which I do I do love. I, I love digital technology and all that. Um, but um, the work that I do, it is painting. It, it is hand painted, and it's it's fine detail. And um, not many people, uh, not too many people that, that I know of, sort of do do this style of art. Um, uh, sort of analog art anymore it's um a lot of the style that i do is, is gone to gone the way of digital which is you know it's uh, it's wonderful um so i guess maybe it's something to do with my age i'm 51 now and i've been mm-hmm. doing it for um i've been doing it for about uh, well all my life but seriously for about 13 14 maybe a bit longer years hmm. yeah how did you get into it just uh desire really it, it was actually um a person a, a, a woman that i was so I was dating actually, and she was finishing up at art school, mm-hmm. and um, it just just by virtue of, of being around her doing doing all her artwork, um, I, I just got interested in it again, and I, I hadn't been that into it since I left high school, and um, so yeah, it just it just kind of drew me in, and I remembered how much I, I used to really enjoy doing it, and one thing led to another, and huh. uh, so yeah, and um, and I did um, I just. I did a, I spent about two or three years just developing, uh, just painting in my spare time after work and weekends and things until I had enough to show um, some galleries. And one of the first galleries that I, I approached, um, fortunately said yes, and um, and I started showing, and mm-hmm. and that was it. That was it. Um, yeah, and I just, I've just been selling off and on ever since nice nice like you said yeah. there's a lot of detail here right these i was looking at these flowers beforehand and it must take forever right? yeah when you um, do something you, like this you have uh you know some images kind of sketched out or you have some like clippings from different things and then you paint it from there or it's just all in your head because it's, there's a lot going on here the basic the basic image is is in my head i mean like when i when i say the basic image um like you know that there's uh, they they just a lot of images come and go uh, in, in in my mind like all the time and the ones that I paint are the ones that stick around. Um, mm-hmm. It's really it's really that simple. Sometimes I know what they mean. Sometimes I'm not so sure. Uh, but I know it, it, even the ones that I don't have a strong particular meaning for. Um, I, I still find that I, I feel strongly about the image for some reason. Mm-hmm. And um, so maybe, uh, so, so sometimes I paint them and then I figure out the meaning afterwards. And, um, 
but um yeah so so when i when i do something like this like i um i knew there was going to be a, a volcano in it um i put volcanoes in a few paintings they're very very powerful images they, they mean a lot to to different people mm. I, I knew there was gonna, i knew there was going to be a volcano a garden and a boy holding a rabbit and um and i didn't really know any more than that mm. the um the the, uh, the 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 mother figure with the rabbit's head she came about halfway through um or maybe even maybe even later than that i just thought it sort of needed something slightly slightly more um uh slightly more fantastical i suppose mm -hmm. yeah slightly nice. otherworldly because i i always like to try and get, get a mixture of something that's um uh it's um, I'm trying to get to like a ratio of like about sort of 90% real life, 10% fantasy, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. that, that's sort of what I'm going for. So, so the fantasy element's becoming a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. Um, but what that means is that even, even if there's one tiny little ele fantasy element in the painting, it kind of makes the whole thing fantastical because, mm -hmm. um, because, it automatically means that it, it sort of exists in a in a in another in another world, mm -hmm. I suppose, yep. in an imagine imaginary space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've used the word fantastical a couple of times. Is that the name for this genre, or is this surrealism, or what? How do you classify this? Um, it's uh, it's definitely not surrealism. I think surrealism. Um, that's that's what inspired me initially. But surrealism, I think, is um. Uh, it's a bit um it's maybe the the images are a bit more all over the place than what i do um like like my my favorite like like most people into this kind of thing my my favorite is is dali salvador dali but then there's um other people there's um remedius Sparrow and um oh what's what's her name god she's dropped dropped my um there's, there's two of them there's remedius Sparrow and um Ah, God, I've had, I've had a mind blank. Anyway, um, Rene Magritte and all the all the usual cast of characters that are in in surrealism. But um, what I do, I think it's it's more closely aligned to magical realism because magical realism um, it, it sticks a bit more to to everyday reality and just twists it just a little bit. Whereas mm -hmm. surrealism just goes surrealism goes all in. And and it's really it's really stream of consciousness, and it doesn't necessarily perhaps make quite as much sense. It's yeah. So I think I think it's it's magical realism, I guess. Huh. Um, yeah. I mean, you can use like fantasy as like the catch-all term, um, which is you know that's also fine. I mean, whatever. It, it, it's basically it's basically drawing in a world as as some kind of reality. That, yeah. that's essentially what it is it's sure. drawing it's yeah sorry guys uh, are you interested in like uh fantasy you know books and movies that sort of stuff or there's no yeah, connection so, yeah. yeah yeah no i did there definitely is the way um but i mean the best the best fantasy that this is this is what i like about fantasy is the best fantasy says um as much or more about reality as any um, any nonfiction can, you know, like for for example, the best best example up to <laughs> up to maybe season seven and eight. The, the best example is like Game of Thrones. You know, I mean that is a fantasy uh, fantasy world, but it had like a really really sharp take on um, on how people interact with each other, and um, yeah, it was it was amazing. I mean, even things like um, even things like Harry Potter. I mean, I started reading Harry Potter. Um, my my mum bought it for me. Um, I've got a twin sister, and my mum bought us the Harry Potter books when we were we were twenty six, and we we're like, mum, these are kids' books, but we absolutely love them. And you know, they 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 really things like that that they just if they're well written, that they can sort of really describe you back to yourself, just in a in a fantasy world. There's all this all, all these characters and and um, tropes and things that are very relatable to um, to people. You know, that that's what makes fantasy you know good 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 fantasy will have will have that element of um, element of 
uh, realism and, and reality that, that will draw you into it and make you relate to the characters in it. And that's what I really, really try and do with the art. So even though it is fantasy, it's, um, it's most definitely about aspects of reality. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, Gareth. Uh, I would need some time to digest that. Because, uh, you know, to be honest, I, uh, I, you know, personally, I don't, I don't, I haven't watched Game of Thrones or uh, Harry Potter, that sort of stuff. And in my mind, I was kind of thinking, well, that's just fantasy, that's not real. And I'm interested in the real world. But recently with art and that I have, you know, learned that really good art is usually abstract. And, you know, if it's just painting something exactly like a photograph, there's, you know, you might as well just take a photograph. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to think yeah. about that more. Maybe you're, Maybe there's more to fantasy than I originally thought. I like your it's art, sort of, but I just, you know, don't, I don't read those books. They have all those hard names and I, I've got a small brain. It's like <laughs> three or four, you know, Jim, Jack, and John walk into a bar is about all I can handle. <laughs> um, that's totally fair enough. No, well, I, I, um, um, I, I used to struggle with the sort of photorealism aspect of, of, of what I, you know, the, um, when, I, when I try to represent something as realistically as possible, um, I used to, I used to struggle with that. It's like you know because I mean photography has been around for you know a few hundred years now, and you know so it's uh, the, the the natural progression for painting was to go abstract and then all that sort of thing. But um, what I find is that even even if I do something as as fine as I can possibly do it, and spend ages on something trying to make it look as realistic as possible, it will never look like a photograph. It will always always look like I painted it mm -hmm. I just can't help it you know and that that's um great <laughs> uh, so, so it's sort of this um it's not it's not like this sort of uncanny valley thing where you have something that you know when you see people that are digitally created and they're sort of they're, they're this close to, to looking realistic but there's something a little bit off about them it's it's not like that it's like I'm um I'm, I'm technically all right but I'm not I'm not um, good enough to do stuff that's photorealistic. I'm I'm just not as good as that. Mm. And so even um, you know I've I've seen photorealist painters and and they're incredible. It just blows my mind. It's you know it's kind of like why bother on the one hand, but on the other hand it's it's like well you know there's 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 some there's something about it. It's like when you find out a photorealistic painting is in fact a painting. It's mm. like my God, how the how the hell it's so amazing. It's very impressive. But yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm not um, I do try and make things look as realistic as possible, but they always end up looking just like like I painted them. Mm. So, mm. Yeah, I kind of want to inspect this one a bit. So I I found some artists don't like talking about the meaning of their art, but I was looking at this before, and it looks like there's a guy here, and there's like a triangle or a star. Is that just my eyes, or are there some hidden images in your paintings? Um, there's uh, I'm uh, yes yes and no. Um, I think there's um, when I'm doing mountains and clouds and and trees and things like that. There's there's all sorts of details that uh, fr from because I I always work from photographs. So I, I I never work from you know uh, other paintings, for example, or anything like that. I I was I always work from photographs, and there's always shapes and images that come up in the in the and maybe the more background details that people will find things that I never intended. Mm -hmm. Every so often, every so often, I, I do put something in deliberately, but most of the time, it's just complete accident. And people see, see all sorts of things um, in, in stuff. Like I, I've got another one, uh, one of the first volcano ones I did actually. And a few people have seen like a, a big dragon in the, in the volcano cloud. And it was a complete accident. I see. So, yeah, I mean it's very very open to it. I mean, it. It has, on the one hand, the painting has a definite meaning, but on the other hand, it's also very open to interpretation. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't. It it's interesting. There's tons of detail in these flowers. I saw this this one here that I mentioned. Also, like here, it looks like there's a a bear or something, right? Like two eyes and the nose and the yeah, it's it's cool. I got it. Oh, that's awesome. I never noticed that. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, the paintings are kind of, they're, they're sort of about, uh, they're basically a visual diary of, of, of things that are going on uh, around around me, to, to, to me and to friends of mine or, you know, 
um, to my my wife or whatever, and they're, they're just they're, they're just little little stories that get interpreted through the lens that I paint with. Nice, I guess. Yeah, nice. Let, let's drive around a bit. Let's check you out on Uptick here. So, you, when did you get on Uptick? About six months ago. Uh, I think I think so. Yeah, it was, uh, maybe yeah, something like that. But it wouldn't wouldn't be longer than that. I was, yeah, maybe four or five months ago. Maybe yeah. six. And what's your what's your take on NFTs these days? I don't really want to say one way or the other because uh, uh, either way, I could be completely wrong. I've just got no idea. You know, mm. it, it, it sort of depends. If you, um, it's like if you if you want confirmation bias, you just like you just um, you can just look up on you can just search something like are NFTs doomed, and you'll get like a whole slew of articles. And if you want search are NFTs the future, you'll get a whole bunch of articles like that. So who knows? Yeah. I've got no idea. It's 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 just another one of those um, incredibly interesting um, interesting things that that's happened through digital media and the internet and stuff. It's you know it's it's very very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Have you had a play with uh, AI art? Have you tried any of that? You put in some like, keywords and no. <laughs> uh, one. Uh huh. Uh, what did I? I can't remember what I typed in. Um, uh, I can't remember. I think it was. It was something really innocuous, like cat baseball car uh, lamp, or something. I I can't remember. And um and it was uh, I don't I don't think I did I don't think I did it right because um it, it sort of came out really wonky. I don't know. Maybe I was I was just doing it wrong. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a luddite. Um, as, as you can tell when when I was trying to trying to get all these get these images on on the um uptick site, I I was having I was having real trouble doing even really basic things like resizing the images. It's just, um, uh, I I love the digital world so much, but I'm I'm very I have very basic understandings of how to sort of how to use use the tools within it. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone um, starts out like that. Just got to play around and figure it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, hmm. um, but yeah, I, I don't um the the whole, the whole AI thing is um it's uh it's interesting and it's terrifying as well um you know it, it is scary i mean um you can think about in in the in the not too distant future is is digital technology going to make everybody an expert at everything mm. um you know and then how are people going to define themselves what's going to give them purpose you know you know what i mean because totally um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty scary yeah yeah, it is. I, I mean, it's like um, I think I think that maybe um, what what I'm hoping is that um, things um, that the, the uh, that sort of AI stuff will kind of stay in its box and maybe be used by by people for advertisements and things like that. And fine art will be in its other box. Because I mean, that's the thing about the art world is the fact that there's many different art worlds. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's there's like you know the the abstract art world and the sort of um, um, performance art world and you know all sorts of things <clears throat> and it's just it's just finding which one gives you satisfaction as an artist or as a as a, as a consumer as a person. I mean the thing that the thing that I like about what um uh, the the thing that I like about what I do is the fact that um in terms of the original paintings anyway, is the fact that people can look at them and they can just automatically see how much time has been put into them. It's obvious. Um, and with something, um, with, with, with some of the other um, abstract works, um, it may require a little bit of um, uh, maybe, you know, reading up about the artist and finding out about their processes, because it might not be that obvious in the um in the end product it might be more conceptual like um like what was the name of the guy who um there's a guy who all he did was he sliced a canvas i can't remember what his name is oh my god what's that doing there that was i'm also a music teacher and that was me trying to, trying to play <laughs> just just going through the huh <laughs> i was uh, instagram yeah instagram all right oh yeah, yeah that yeah. one that, this one here you're yeah, yeah, super talented one. man there's so much going how long do these take like months and months is it like one one shot you do it or you just keep going over and over and over or you know how does it 
how do you put this together? Oh, thank you. Well, the, this this one is it's a composite of three different three different photographs of the South Island of New Zealand, mm -hmm. um, and um, the idea behind it was um, it was it was what I what I was saying before it was. I was trying to get an idea across, but I was trying to make the um, the fantasy elements of it um, a lot smaller than I than I was previously doing, mm -hmm. um, which which is why the the two headed bird is it it's really quite small. Like this, um, the the image that that you've got there on the screen, it actually goes up the uh, the clouds go up probably a bit like another twenty percent higher. Okay. Um, so it's it's a bit it's a bit taller than that, and then and then when it came time to doing the woman, I was trying to trying to make them not not particularly overpowering either. Mm -hmm. So you could so you could sort of appreciate it as a landscape painting, but then it's got it's got another meaning within it because um, I mean landscape painting is it's wonderful, um, but it's kind of for, to me it's it's just kind of pointless. It's like, well, you know, that's that that's where the photog for me, that's where the sort of photography argument comes in. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you know, just you know, a, a photograph will capture a landscape absolutely beautifully, and you can you can do that. I mean, you can do it in Photoshop as well, I suppose. I mean, this this entire image of, of this painting of mine could could be done, uh, you know, it could be done through um, through Photoshop, I imagine, quite easily these days. Hmm. Um, but I, but I think it's just a, it's just a process. It's a, it's a habit that I just, I'm sort of, um, I'm sort of addicted to the habit of it. it get, and it, it gives me great satisfaction. I, I just like build. It's like building something. It's mm -hmm. like building an image, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, a lot of the time when when I start things, I, I don't have the whole thing mapped out. Like I don't, I never do, I never sketch everything out. Um. All I do, like for example, with this one, I just divided it up into into three three basic areas, and then I just found three landscapes that I like that that I thought worked together, and mm. and just did it. And and then um, the um, the tough thing can be um, getting the lighting right, um, mm -hmm. because if you're using well, like in this one, there's three different landscape photos, and the lighting is a bit different in each one. So, um, so what I find is, like, after I've after I've painted all three of them together, that then I sort of have to stand back and and look at them and just find out what I, you know, because the, the light's got to come, it's got to be standardised to come from one direction and um, just you know just things like that, just really yeah. really basic sort of basic things. There's a lot of I've seen a few of these two-headed hummingbirds in your paintings. It's a reoccurring theme. Oh, right. Or? Yeah. Um. I, yeah. It is. It is. I mean. Um. Most of the, the, in terms of themes, most of the stuff that I do is, um, it's about um, how can I put it? It's it's about it's about overcoming the that most of the stuff is about overcoming the challenges of life or trying to accept the challenges of life if you're not able to overcome them, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and uh, the two-headed bird thing is. Um, it's got a double meaning. One is that I'm a twin, so it's you know it stands you know it's got that meaning me and my myself and my twin sister, mm. um, and it's got the other meaning which is that um, when um, whenever you come to a particular um, a particular time in your in your life that you have to make a big decision, and you can you can go one of one of two ways. That that one there that you've got up now that that was the very first thing that I, that I painted. It took me about two years, and it was really. Kind of, it's yeah, pretty, it's I, pretty I, epic, man. That's you got a good start there. Wow. <laughs> it never, it never. I never, I never managed to sell it. It's it's still sitting in the um sitting in the in the closet up there. It was just um, yeah. It, it was it was just trying to get some uh, some techniques together, and I couldn't think of what to do, so I figured I'd. I'd start by painting sort of images of abstract images of clouds, and then it developed into a crucifixion, and then it developed into ah, oh, God knows, I can't remember something to do with um, images of science and stuff like that. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, it's very just, engaging. It's very mesmerizing. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. good. It's so good. this is like five pieces, like five separate panels, or how does it look? Yeah. 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 It's it's five uh, five separate canvases. Yeah. Hmm. That, that I did. Yeah. Um. Over like I say, over about two years. Um. It was uh one of the inspirations behind it was there was a movie I don't know if you've seen it 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 was a sort of um a sort of pop 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 culture science movie well pseudo science I don't know depending on what you believe called what the bleak do we know mm -hmm. I don't know if have you heard about that no no uh, it was um it, it was produced it was quite quite a long time ago probably close to twenty years ago actually and it just had had all, the, all these people talking about um. Uh, all, all the different aspects because th this was when quantum um, uh, quantum science was just coming into the public consciousness and it was and and this movie was sort of extrapolating all these different ideas from us and you know what, what, what it could mean and, and it, it was just fascinating and I just wanted to do something that sort of represented my idea my ideas about that and it's really a very much a stream of consciousness painting Mm -hmm. I just sort of kept going. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> until, great. Until it was kind of finished, and I was like, "What the hell have I done? Oh my god!" I love anyway. it. Anyway, so you said <laughs> this one's still not sold. How how do you uh, how do you get the word out that you have these? Is it just the website, or do you do a lot of galleries, or how do you make yourself known? Um. Well, that's uh, that's always a bit of a struggle. Um. It, it's um. Uh. In the beginning, actually, no, it's still, still to this day. I mean, I've got, I've got the website that you're on that mm -hmm. that b badly needs updating and hasn't been updated for a little while. Um, but um, it's just basically uh, gallery, uh, the gallery, the the galleries that I've that I've managed to get in, they they sort of do promotion and um, and that that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Because because in between um, in between doing doing my music teaching job and doing the paintings themselves. Um, there's not really that much time left in the week to sort of um, devote to doing promotion and that kind of thing. So um, I just I just cross my fingers and hope that they'll hope that they'll um, go out through the through the galleries that I've been involved with. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been it's been a you know it's been a, a mixed experience. Um, some of them have been wonderful, and some of them have been you know just haven't really worked. And hmm. yeah. Yeah, I just got to keep trying. I know everyone's really oh, yeah. busy. I don't know the best way to promote yourself, but I, you know, if you got time, it wouldn't hurt to be on Twitter. You know, join different groups and there's those Twitter spaces. People have conversations, and I think over time you can get the word out. But it does take a commitment to you know consistently be in there and and make yourself known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, and you, uh, some people some people really just have a knack mm. for self promotion. It's just it's just unbelievable you know some people can just do it um you know you just have like a certain uh certain personality and a certain a certain way to promote yourself without sounding egotistical and um you, you can just draw people in to what you're doing and, and there's, there's a real fine line there because you know of course i want the work to be no, and of course I, of course I do. You know, it's it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling mm. to have somebody, you know, to, to have people appreciate what you do. Of course it is. Um, but it's like you know, trying to. Um, there are ways to do it, and then there are um, there are there are other ways to perhaps maybe not do it. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah. Because you, yeah, because you know, you want to, you want to come across genuine. Is there anything, any other topics you want to go over, or do you have any requests uh, from Uptick what they could be doing better, or? Oh no, I was just, um, I was just really, really uh, happy. I was, I was stoked to be, to be asked. It was, it was wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really cool. It's, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful site, and I was really, really, um, really, you know, um, pleased to, to be asked to be a part of it. So yeah, thank you very, very much. Cool, man. It's been, well, really, it's been great. Thanks for your time today. Yeah, I hope to see you again. Uh, good luck. And uh, <laughs> yeah, hope those floods Thank aren't you. too bad down there. Yeah, yeah. I guess, we'll, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. It's coming up to 10 o'clock at night now. And there's oh, been dark. all sorts of reports. Yeah, so hope, hopefully it will it will um, start to recede overnight and see how it goes tomorrow morning. All yeah. right. Anyway, all thank, right. thank you very, very much. Yeah, thank you, Gareth. Take care. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.